Hello everyone and welcome to this latest video discussion as part of the RICS Tech Partner Program. Uh, my name is Andrew Knight and I work within the thought uh, leadership and analytics part of the, uh, the RICS and my role is to look at the whole impact of data and technology right across the built and natural environment. And with over 110,000 members working right across the globe and right across the property life cycle all the way through land, planning and development, construction, brokerage, valuation, uh, property management, asset management, and indeed end of life, there's a huge impact in a positive way about how data and technology can help the profession and indeed the people who use the profession. Uh, and with our members working in residential, commercial, alternative assets and infrastructure, once again, the scope of data and technology and the way it can help the profession and help society more broadly use real estate is huge. And I'm really glad today to have uh, Matt Pope from Guided uh, join me. So Matt, please do join me on the discussion. Hey Andrew, thanks very much for uh, having me today. Pleasure, pleasure. Now, I always, before we get into the kind of bits and bytes and the technology side, it's always great to hear a bit of the kind of human side. So it'd be great to hear from you a bit of your backstory and the kind of origin story of Guided. Yeah, if you, um, if you haven't picked up, um, I'm, I'm Aussie um, <laughs> by trade. So I moved over to the UK in 2019. And, and prior to Guided, um, I did a, a startup in the commercial uh, real estate space. And that was really focused on um, how we could make commercial real estate more efficient, present detection, um, knowing where people were in a building and, and get better occupancy management within, within um, a commercial building. And then it was uh, in probably about 18 months ago that uh, a mate of mine, um, who's the co-founder um, of Guided, um, reached out to me and was talking about a problem that um, he was uh, trying to solve around in the uh, residential real mm. estate market and and identifying particularly coming off the back of um, the Grenfell Tower disaster and um, how we can not make sure that happens again from a data management and, and, and visibility and resident experience point of view and I've just come off the back of um, my previous startups kind of acquisition so it was a really good opportunity for me to uh, to get involved and, and do it all over again um, don't know why I want to put myself through the punishment of doing startups all over again, but uh, it was, it's a really good opportunity and something that both uh, myself and my co-founder Ali are really, really passionate about. Well, it's, it's interesting you, you talk about problem solving because I, I guess whilst it's interesting to think about the data and tech in, in technical terms, ultimately data and technology is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. So, what, and you alluded to, to those kind of building safety issues that obviously were very so sadly highlighted by Grenfell, but uh, what problems are you solving? What, what, what is the problem and, and how are you solving it? Yeah, so what Guided is all about is we really are uh, acting as the, the voice of the resident um, first and foremost. So how do you make sure that um, when you move into your new home, you have all the information that you should have about the new home that you're moving into, whether that be you as a, as a resident, as a tenant, or as a homeowner. It's really important you understand the building fabric um, of the home you're living, you're living in, uh, in, the, in the event of an emergency, what to do, what's available in your home. Um, and particularly for homeowners, all that key information about your warranty, your certificates, making sure everything is compliant within the home. And then all the way down to those really simple things of um, shrinking, cracking, selling in periods of your new home. Um, how do I use my new hob? Um, you know, all those really simple things that are really important and, and can be often misunderstood. And so Guide is really focused on that pre-completion through to the end of your defect liability management period, making sure uh, uh, as a developer, you can provide all the right information and be compliant with handing over everything to the homeowner and the resident. And then as a homeowner, as a resident, you've got that information. It's easy to understand. It's accessible uh, and you can take action off the back of it. Now, I guess one of the things that I talk a lot about and it's one of the things I have a kind of a, a, a bee in my bonnet to use that English phrase is this whole kind of uh, issue in the built environment about moving away from dare I say, physical documents through digital documents to then actually kind of more structured data. Because, you know, if, if I look at the, the digital twin of my Edwardian house in the UK, it's a plastic box in the loft full of bits of paper. So, you know, what, what, yeah. what, why is it so important to do that? I mean, it feels self-evident, but so what's so important about that sort of mentality of moving away from bits of paper effectively? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of key elements that we look at. So, so first and foremost, it's easy to tackle the problem um, for new builds because their fresh new homes have been developed. It's really easy to identify throughout construction um, what elements and what assets have gone into the development of that home. 
Um, where it becomes really important is in lots of aspects of the ongoing maintenance and management of that home and in the event um, that, that something may occur, how you manage and maintain um, that particular home. So knowing the bricks that are used or the cladding that is used, um, the insulation, the fire retardants, the, um, all that really important information about the actual home that makes it feel safe for the homeowner and the resident. But then also those building elements, what does it mean when it comes to managing and maintaining that home? Uh, and when you go back to kind of your example of an old Edwardian home, it becomes even more critical that you understand um, the construction of that home because of how hard and difficult it is to manage molds um, and and ventilation and energy efficiency and all those sorts of things. That they're not problems just go away because it's a new home. Mm. Both you know old homes and new homes all suffer the same problems because of the climate in the UK. And it's really important that people understand how do they maintain that home. What are the best ways to ensure that they've got the right ventilation and the settling in period is understood and, and what is a true defect versus what is a settling in um, result of climate and change of a new build. Um, and understanding all that information from a data point of view gives homeowners better insight into how they can actually manage the home and not just have a document that's sitting in a folder somewhere that gets lost. But when they leave that home and the next homeowner comes in, it's really easy to pass that information from homeowner to homeowner or resident to resident. And from a developer perspective, they understand um, how that home is evolving over time. What is working, what's not working, um, what suppliers or what installers may be installing things correctly or incorrectly. How does a developer learn to ensure they're always building the best way possible um, if they don't have data that can help them solve those problems and give them the insights that they require? And the big thing for us also is if a defect does occur in a, a, an asset that's in a building, how does the developer know? How do they then inform the homeowners or um, the residents that that defect is there and it needs to be resolved? Data solves that problem. By having everything available in data, data enables you to continue that journey from construction all the way through to the end of life of that particular building that ensures the best possible maintenance um, and, and control of that particular environment. So, I mean, it, it, it's fairly clear that, 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 I mean, it's an obvious thing to say in some respect, but, you know, there, there are clear benefits flowing to both the developer, who I guess is now thinking, well, actually, I can move away from handing over a, a ring binder with various documents to a homeowner, and a homeowner gets, I, I think, that much more kind of level of comfort that there really is a, a you know, a, a very, very comprehensive set of information, as you say, down to not only the structure and the fabric, but actually, well, how does the fridge work and, and and you know what how do i clean the hob you know some quite prosaic things that are still very important when you're actually wanting to maintain that i mean have you had uh, i suppose resistance is perhaps a strong word but but i guess you know many parts of the built environment are quite kind of set in their ways if i can use that phrase that they establish ways of doing things has it been kind of hard to get across to developers particularly the benefits to them of actually having this very different approach yeah you know I, Many years ago, I was in the, the financial services um, sector and, and um, for a long time, they are no different to what many consider the building industry to be, which is slow to change, um, setting their ways. And uh, a massive change came um, that really changed the way the financial services industry works and operates, um, which people would look now saying how you know innovative they are, but that's only because change forced that to occur um, and it was you know evolve or die. Um, you know, so to speak. And, and I think the building industry is in that curve now where it's starting to understand the need to change the way it's operating. Uh, and in many industries and sectors, there's always those that are early adopters. Um, those that monitor the early, early adopters and will follow um, soon after. And then those that sit there and go, uh, we don't need to do this. There's no need for change. We're happy doing what we're doing, uh, providing the service that we're providing. And we've kind of experienced all of those um, within what we do, you know, we've had conversations um, with small developers who are like, no, we do it the way we do it today. Um, sounds interesting in your product, but not interested. And um, I think time will change for them. Um, you know, it's about the right timing. Um, then we work with large developers and housing associations who are very much aware how important it is to um, be digital, um, which is not only important from sustainability and environmental point of view, but actually providing better services to homeowners and actually and more efficient for the developer themselves. Because if they can take digital information and reuse that information, they're actually making their lives easier um, and more repeatable and better quality at the end of the day as well. 
And from a homeowner perspective, you, you've pretty clearly articulated the benefits to a homeowner. Are, are you seeing now that kind of pull from the kind of homeowner community to say, actually, we now are beginning to expect this level of digital pack, this kind of level of, of handover from, as I say, the ring binder to, you know, the, this, this presumably web-based access where you can simply access all this kind of information. Are you seeing that kind of pull now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, again, there's that scenario of sometimes people don't know what they can have until they see it yeah. so if you tell a homeowner here's your pdf you know kind of printed document uh, or i've emailed it to you um they think that's great but they didn't know there was actually something even better um, available to them so what we're finding there's a big part of um, the homeowner um, segment who just don't understand what is available and what they should be getting when it comes to homeowner handovers um, and then there's those who are very clearly aware and are savvy around technology and what should be happening. Um, and age becomes a defining factor as well. So yeah. depending on the type of home and who's moving in will depend on actually what's best um, for them. And we, we try and within what we do in Guido, we try and cater for those different scenarios so that um, you can move digital as a, as a business, but you can also cater for those who like to read a PDF document, um, mm. you know, or, or, you know, those who are very savvy and understand, you know, my um, dishwasher can tell me when it needs to be maintenance and serviced and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I suppose it's very important to have that kind of sort of lack of digital exclusion that actually you do cater for people who've got a different appetite for the way the information is actually presented. I mean, getting down into some of the kind of data issues, I mean, obviously in the UK, as you know, we have the concept of the the unique property reference number, which is a great way of kind of identifying property. You know, how do you see the UPRN supporting this kind of data-driven approach? And indeed, are you supporting UPRNs in the way you handle data? Yeah, so at Guided, we do use the UPRN. We're a massive supporter of, of um, the, you know, the UPRN. We wish it was used in, in more areas um, across um, the built environment. Um, we're big believers that if you can capture the data up front, and you can track and trace that data, and you've got a common way of connecting that data across multiple sources, um, we see ourselves sitting within an ecosystem. We don't see ourselves replacing um, all the systems that exist today. We're, we're part of a larger ecosystem in the built environment, how technology can help developers and homeowners and residents. And for that ecosystem to work, you need unique keys that everybody uses that is able to reference that. And that helps as new products come out, as new solutions come out, when governments, housing associations, builders, homeowners, um, the, the aftermarket on resale, uh, all those things are able to connect together. Really importantly, things like the unique property reference number play a key role in ensuring that data and the history of that home goes all the way through its life cycle. Indeed, no. and as you say, I think that's a very important point that, 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 that really, you know, the full data on you know a property in its location has to come from multiple sources now you can never kind of have everything in one particular place you need to be able to glue, glue these data sets together now i believe you're doing something with B, B, bsi around bsi identify can you tell us a bit more of what you're doing and why that's important to, to what you're supporting here yeah so off the back of um the grenfell disaster bsi built a product called bsi identify and that was all about being able to trace from the manufacturer through to development um, products and building fabric information. Again, using the concept of a unique property reference number, but a unique product um, reference number um, that meant that it didn't matter who the de developer was, that one unique code could identify that manufactured product. So whether it be a side rise that goes in um, to the building cavity, whether it be some insulation, whether it be um, you know any sort of material, fire doors, whatever it might be, that information is tagged at manufacture you know, therefore, all the key information about that product, the, the imagery, the dimensions, the sizes, the, the, the product details, the, its certificates, its uh, all of its kind of key document uh, and product information, and then trace all the way through to the developer. And BSI have done a really good job in it, and they're progressing on getting more and more manufacturers to use their identified product. But where BSI stops and where Guided plays a really key role is being able to trace what areas that product was actually used so what developments what sites what plots and whereabouts in that plot was a side rise actually implemented or a you know a, a cavity insulation uh, implemented and then what that enables um, developers to do is be able to trace products across all of their sites and plots 
um, reuse that information, but then from a hierarchy point of view, actually get an insight. If something was to go wrong and a particular item was a defect, they could trace every single plot that it was in immediately using data. They'd be able to immediately identify where in that plot, who the supplier was that provided it to them, who was the installer of that particular product and all the manufacturing information. And that's really what we've been done with our collaboration with, with BSI Identify and those two components, our product with their product becomes really powerful um, for developers uh, and governments when it comes to um, managing um, information and building fabric information on an ongoing basis. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's funny, isn't it? I, I've had conversations in a, a similar vein uh, around different kinds of, of ways of looking at data and real estate, and it does come back to this sense that, that we almost are playing catch up, I guess, with 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 sectors like automotive and, and aerospace, where you have that kind of batch traceability. And as we all know, you know, we all have owned a car and had a letter from whoever saying, actually, your car yes. was made between these dates and there's a fault with this particular seal on the steering gear and please bring it back to a dealer and we'll place it. And, and we've almost taken for granted that we have that level of, as you say, batch traceability, the, able to, the, the ability to, to, to literally know which particular vehicles or which aeroplane have this particular part in and that be able to sort of deal with defects at, at that aggregate scale when they do occur. Because let's be honest, we, you do get issues, you do get defects and without that kind of almost bill of material understanding of what's gone into a, a number of assets, you don't have that. And I guess it sounds like that that's a large area that you're looking at in this whole kind of certification warranty batch traceability i mean what 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 what's guided doing that that almost kind of really highlights that particular area of tracing all these dates and expiries and warranties yeah if you think about home ownership it's um always talked about as the single largest investment anybody would ever make um and it seems to be a secret about what it is the home that you're purchasing um, and nobody shares any information about the home that you are about to, to move into and that single largest, largest investment that you're ever going to make and thing that you pay off for the rest of your life. And um, for us, we see it being the opposite. If you're making significant purchases like a new home, you have every right to know everything that should be known about that particular building. It should be easy for a developer to be able to record that and share that information. And it should be really easy for a homeowner to be able to see that information. And then importantly, um, the right information being available to local authorities and, and fire safety um, you know, departments and things like that to ensure that that home is well maintained and well looked after and the homeowner knows um, what, what it is that they're purchasing. So for us, we see the value in being able to record what went into that home, the building envelope, all the information about it, appliances fit into fixtures, and then the full history of that home. So if you're purchasing a home, knowing that it's within defect liability period or not mm. is important. Knowing whether it's in its structural warranty period or not is important. Knowing the history of that home, knowing that um, there was 10 issues that existed prior to completion that were resolved, knowing there was another three that existed through defect liability period and then resolved, and then knowing that you've got two more years left on your structural warranty uh, or your structural warranty is now finished, uh, and your EPC or your, your energy rating is actually about to expire and there's a whole series of things that need to occur. We believe in kind of democratising and making available all the information about a building so that a homeowner could be on Zoopla or on right move and they could see that information and they can move into their new home, know exactly what it is that they're purchasing. And that's what we are aiming to do. And that's what we think is really important when it comes to traceability all the way through the life of a home. So I mean, on on that sort of concept of almost moving beyond, you know, where you know somebody's bought a new home, everything's now technically out of warranty. How do you see that the solution now coping with that kind of handover to a new owner, and also I guess the challenges around kind of multi-story, multi-family, but also that kind of, you know, if you replace the cooker how do you then update that? How do you make sure that it doesn't become a, a, a almost a sort of deteriorating digital asset, that that digital asset yeah. is maintained and that always reflects the current status? Yeah, so the way the way we tackle the guided is, um, is, is a few different aspects for us and, and we build guided off the back of what we think industry should be doing and, and how it should be working and operating. So um, throughout construction, a developer is able to trace and track and tag all of the building fabric information, assets, fittings, fixtures and appliances that go into the building. They're able to record all of the important aftercare information. 
and they're able to reuse that information across multiple plots and developments. They're able to highlight all the local community things, or, you know, your bin collection, waste yeah. management, all that sort of stuff. So all the really important things around moving into your new home and the experiences, all your key documents around uh, all your energy certificates and, and building warranty information. Um, warranty providers are able to upload uh, all of the information directly into um, guided. So your, you know, your NHBC warranty is an example can be in there visible. All the information about the structural warranty um, through the guided defect and inspection management um, module. Homeowners and developers are able to perform the inspections and defect management in guide. So it's all visible in one spot. We also integrated to other defect management tools to again from an ecosystem point of view, um, but all visible to the homeowner in one location. And then if in five or 10 years time, the homeowner sells that home, it's really simple and easy for the homeowner to assign ownership to the new owner. And all that information then carries on to that new owner. But throughout that process, if the homeowner was to replace the fridge, they have the ability to go into Guided, mm -hmm. click on a button, remove the asset, add the new asset details in there. Our asset wizard makes it really easy just by entering in a model number and a name of an appliance to actually bring back all the information about that and then tag it to the room. So you can go into the room, see the fridge, see the details of the fridge, how to use the fridge, it's warranty information. Um, and that makes it really easy to manage and maintain um, all the building fabric information and asset information, and then do that throughout the life of um, the home. For us is what we see being really key to the built environment and moving to a digital environment. It's not just about taking PDF documents and sticking them online. It's about yeah. a true data approach to all the information about a building. I mean, certainly that, 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 that's a really a big prize, isn't it, ultimately? And I guess part of unlocking that prize is also the challenge and opportunity of, of, of managing sort of more public access to the data in terms of emergency services. You talked about, you know, obviously a handover to, to future owners. But how do you see that kind of balance of, of governance and, and privacy and, and management of the data to make sure that we can unlock the data set for the public good, but at the same time have that level of privacy as well? Yeah, it's it's a fine line, um, particularly when it comes to, you know, my home and what I do and do not want people to be able to see. Um, surprisingly, people probably don't understand, there's actually already a lot that's publicly available yeah. about homes. Um, you know, some is free, some you have to pay for, um, but a lot of information about a home is available. And, and if I was to look at like Zoopla and Right Move as an example, they already do quite a lot uh, around showing information about a home, a history of a home in terms of its purchasing and sales and things like that. Um, you know, all the energy certificates of a home is available. Um, you know, real time um, on government websites. So I think in many parts, government will start to, and I have already started the journey of um, demanding what must be publicly available about a home. And we would welcome more and more opportunity for government to, um, you know, have a charter that talks about what should be publicly available to government, to the public, and then to emergency services. Mm -hmm. You know, things like fire access routes, um, you know, um, fire safety information, building fabric information should be made accessible. Yeah. When you're purchasing a home or you're looking to purchase a home, why should you be requesting or having to pay to get that information? That should be available to you. It's powerful for warranty providers. It's powerful for homeowners, importantly. It's powerful for government agencies and emergency services. Uh, and it's also powerful for uh, mortgage providers and, and insurers because it's really easy then for everyone to understand and add the most value in their part of the segment. So. We're, we're massive supporters and, and we're over time we'll be looking to do more where we can make available the right information um, that doesn't give away those privacy concerns um, but is important for, to, to share publicly um, but then also the power is, is within our tool for homeowners to share things with tenants and other people as they wish as well so we've got a, a multi kind of um, scale kind of access control capability within um, Guide that enables the sharing information to be controlled by homeowners, by developers, by tenants as well. And I guess a, a last thought is, is, is there's obviously a, a growing momentum around these kind of property passports, logbooks, call, call them what, what, what you will. How have you tried to kind of differentiate and, and really focus on some areas where you think you're really adding some, some value? Because, you know, arguably there are a lot of people sort of active in this space now. And it's about thinking about yeah. how do you really kind of focus in on the really key issues that, that, that work obviously for the developer and for the homeowner? Yeah, so I think... It's just interesting. So importantly for us, even though our client um, is the developer or the home builder who's, who's purchasing guided, 
everything we do and design and build, even down to the cost structures, are designed with the homeowner and the resident in mind. So the homeowner and the resident never pays for guided as an example. Mm. So when you talk about in 10 and 15 years time, um, how do they access and manage and maintain that home it is at zero cost. So the barrier for being able to use guided for, as a homeowner ongoing is not there because they have access, they have control, they have ownership, and they don't have to pay to manage and maintain that information. Um, the way we design the system, so from a user experience and connecting into the web app and the mobile apps, is all designed with simplicity and the homeowner in mind. How might they consume that information? What is the easiest way to get that information? What is the easiest way to make that information accessible to homeowners and residents? So that, again, is how we think about what we do. And when we talk about digitising information, we get down to as minute data level as possible that makes it really easy for the repeatability and reusability of all the content information. And it's not about gimmicks, so it's not about kind of using AI because it's a great thing to say or to do, but actually because it makes it better as an experience and makes it compliant for developers when they're handing over to, mm. to homeowners and ensures compliance. So we can give developers and home builders confidence that when they click on a button that says I'm handing over to a homeowner, and our wizard does all the checks to make sure everything's right, they know they're gonna be compliant when they're handing over and they know they're going to be providing the right and the best possible experience to the homeowners at completion. No, no fascinating. Well, uh, it, it's it's a hugely important area. I mean, as I say, I, I, I've been, you know, in many ways using the phrase documents to data for a long time in terms of how we need to get the whole sector to move away from the bits of paper and PDFs into, into this structured data because it opens up so many uh, other use cases, as you well know, around retrofit for existing properties and, and about this whole kind of quality piece and indeed the, the building safety. So, but for today, it's been fascinating to talk, Matt, and, and I look forward to catching up again in the future. But uh, thanks ever so much for talking to me today. No, thank you, Andrew. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity to talk.